Cardinal Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas, again alive with anticipation as the Stanford Cardinal invade Austin to take on the Longhorns of Texas. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. It's not just been a hot week weather-wise here in Texas. A lot of heat on this Texas football team after that opening season loss. Mac Brown has to put it back together and assure that that hangover won't last through today. Hoping the smoke of a loss a week ago is clear this week. Here come the Texas Longhorns, the Cotton Bowl champs of a year ago. Welcome back to Austin. My partner, as always, is Gary Danielson. That loss was devastating to the fans here in Austin and all around Texas, Gary. But I tell you what, the team better get over it because here comes Stanford with a great passing attack. You know, Brad, there's been a lot of great passing attacks at Stanford. Elway, Plunkett. But this is the best one ever. They got a great quarterback. Todd Husick is the guy that's going to be starting out with the football, but he's got three go-to guys on this football team. Three guys with football's going to end up in any one of their hands. Walters, Pitts, and Davis. They're the three guys. Troy Walters, the star, but all three of them can make the plays. There's really no way to stop the passing attack. You know, we talked about wasting a great defensive effort last week by Texas. Can they stop Stan? Well, it's not going to be about this football. There's only two ways to stop a pass attack you either score more points or you put a pass rush on the guy and this is what texas has to do they got two guys sean rogers and casey hampton they just create havoc they did it last week against north carolina state they have to get a push today to do it otherwise one loss as mac brown's fearing could be two losses could be a season turning game here today texas home to the cardinal of stanford we'll have the kick when we come back Here in Austin, the Longhorns have some obvious advantages like home field advantage, plus being acclimated to the weather, it could be up to 100 degrees today. But head coach at Stanford, Tyrone Willingham, believes they have a couple of other advantages, one of which is the time of day. You see, for an 11 o'clock start to our broadcast and the kickoff, that means a pregame meal took place at about 7 a.m. this morning, four hours before the game. 7 a.m. to the kids from Stanford means 5 a.m. in the morning. Now, what does that mean? It could mean they could come out a little bit lethargic. They had some problems in 98 getting behind in ball games. It's not what Stanford wants to do is get behind this ball game right at the kickoff. So be aware that they could be a little tired, Brad. <laughs> hey, Swanee, our wake-up call was early enough, we thought, this morning, much less the players in the pregame meal. I really think that's a great point, and I think it affected Arizona last week in our game against Penn State. Stanford won the toss, deferred Texas to receive. The kick sent out of the end zone. And that'll put the Longhorns on their own 20-yard line to start things off. As we take a look at our chilly starting lineup, 325-pound average for Kwai, Kirk Hughes, Blanchard, Raisler, and Leonard Davis, all 367 of him. Kwame Cavill is the long ball man in that group with Ryan Nunez, Jones the tight end, and a quarterback, Major Applewhite. After a sensational freshman season last year, Hodges Mitchell and Ricky Brown will join him in the backfield. And Hodges Mitchell did not return kicks, although that one wasn't returned. There's a reason. A broken bone in that left wrist, and yet he will start today, but it'll take away his return capabilities throughout the afternoon. First down, Texas from its own 20-yard line. And Stanford immediately shows a possible blitz. It's Mitchell. Tough running a week ago, and they don't get a very good start here either. Uh, Two-yard gain against that Cardinal defense. And here's how they look up front. Bigger than they were a year ago. Howard and Curry inside. Benner and Hoover are the defensive ends. They move Real Johnson from defensive end to outside linebacker. Steen and Stockbauer join him. The secondary is a good one. Tim Smith has moved to strong safety this year with Tank Williams at the free. Johnson and Primus are the corners. Second down and eight for Texas. Major Applewhite may be changing things up at the line of scrimmage. Ricky Brown in motion from the backfield. First throw of the day. Applewhite waits, pumps, and goes complete. Out to the 35-yard line, Ryan Nunez with a first down for Texas. Stanford went to their nickel package on second down trying to match up against this Texas passing attack. Reuben Carter is the guy who had the coverage, and Nunes won that battle right there. And that's something that Greg Davis, the coordinator, told us, Brad, that Major is going to have to do in this football game. Look for other receivers besides Kwame Cavill. He does it on first down. 
The first down is outside the 33-yard line. Victor Reich's checked in at the tailback spot. Now he gets the call. Trying to spin away and can't. Real Johnson's got him all wrapped up. Nice play by the converted defensive end who's playing more in space this year in that Cardinal defense. You have to believe, if you're Stanford, that Texas is going to try to test you running the ball. I mean, that, that is, the matchups lean that way. Well, Stanford had a lot of trouble last year, obviously, stopping the run, and there's the totals. They allowed 33 points a game and were 104th in allowing 444 yards of offense to their opposition. Second and 10, no gain by Ike on that last play. A three-wide look now for Applewhite. He's going to go out of the flat. Ricky Brown, the fullback on the run. First down out to the 45-yard line. And it was Stockbauer, the linebacker, isolated out there with the fullback of Texas. Major Applewhite was so effective last week, throwing the ball around, almost playing keep away with the ball against the defense of North Carolina State. He takes up right where he left off, using his backs, throwing the ball short. One of the things we're going to have to watch for in this game is will there be more big plays in the passing game for Texas? Well, they've got an extra wide out in there right now, Gary. Montreal Flowers joins the group in a three-wide receiver formation. Nunez in motion. Everybody wide receiver-wise to the right side. Now the pump fake, the long ball. That might be the big play. Flowers has it inside the 10. Touchdown! Chris Stockton in for the point after. Closing in on the all-time extra point, consecutive extra point record in Texas, and he's got this one. Troy Walters, the deep man for Stanford. He is a dangerous wide receiver and return man. And also, one of the few Stanford players from the state of Texas. Grew up Texas A&M, where his dad was a coach. And he's been trying to tell his teammates all week long what it means to play in the stadium. You know, the ball kind of uh, blew over there, but it does not feel that windy. Uh, I guess it's a, it's a right-to-left wind across your screen today as you're watching it. But I don't feel it's going to affect the game all that much. Major threw that ball right into the wind, just to give you an example. Yeah, by the end of the day, we'll be praying for wind. It's only in the 80s now. They say maybe 96 by the fourth quarter. Texas with a touchdown lead and Stockton's kick. Chases Walters to the eight-yard line. Troy wants to reverse his field, and in doing so, is going to go down at the 11-yard line. Great coverage on the kick team. Bo Trahan down there to make the stop for Texas. Let's check the Chile starting lineup for the Stanford Cardinal. The biggins up front. McLaughlin makes his 35th straight start. Quacha and Heitman, the guards. Cronshagen and Schindler are the tackles. Troy Walters, we talked about already. Durrani Pitts joins him. Russell Stewart is a tight end. It's Todd Husak at quarterback. Coy Wire will start. Emery Brock, the fullback. We'll see a lot of rotation in the backfield for Stanford throughout the day. So they begin in a bit of a hole. First and 10 for the Cardinal from its own 11-yard line. Husek, quick throw to the outside, complete a flag down. Walters has the catch and is near a first down, but a penalty marker in the Stanford backfield. That's a flag. And it's a false start. Five-yard penalty. John Bible, our referee, will walk that off and negate what would have been a first down pickup for Ty Willingham's. Stanford Cardinal, who suffered last year through a three and eight campaign. They were two and six in the Pac-10. So that backs it up now to the seven yard line. Make it a six yard line, first and 15. As you look behind, Paul Warrior, the tailback of Stanford. Block in motion. Texas coming with a long blitz, and it pays off. No gain on the play. Texas defensively, they were sensational last week. They only gave up seven first downs to North Carolina State, but it's a big group up front. Gary already talked about Hampton and Rogers inside. Humphrey and Woodard are the defensive ends. A very rangy linebacker core is led by DeAndre Lewis and Aaron Babineau. Everett Rawls rounds out that list. And in the secondary, a lot of shuffling due to injuries. Greg Brown gets a start at strong safety. Brooks, Jackson, and Walker round out the Texas secondary that has been beaten up in week one. They lost a starter in Quentin Jammer and his backup, Chris Butcher. And here's the throw out in the flat. And across the 20-yard line goes Dave Davis, one of those three receivers that we talked about to open up the game. 
Part of the game plan defensively for Texas is going to have to put pressure on the quarterback. You can see it on this first passing situation. Texas will bring a linebacker, meaning it's a five-man rush coming right off the corner right here. That'll be the fifth rusher, but you have to coordinate that rush with coverage in the defensive secondary. You give the quarterback an easy throw, he's going to take a five-step, three-step drop and just get it out of his hand. Third down, less than a yard. Husek marking signals. Two tight end set. And now motion on the right side. As it appears that Quacha, the guard, may have jumped out of his stance, and that's going to change the complexion of this third down play. I thought it was Schindler, the right tackle, but nevertheless, the guy's on in the white. offense. Five yard penalty. It remains third down. Now they shift with wire back in the backfield. Durante pits to the near side and Walters to the top of your screen. Blitz on Husak. He has to let it go in a hurry, and that's the kind of pressure. Sean Tolpenroot has never punted in a college game and has to take the snap and blocked by Texas. They returned the favor of a week ago. First and goal, the Longhorns try to take advantage of the block punt. The give is to Ike straight up the middle. Nothing doing on the first play. Ike the tailback. Quali Cavill goes in motion as a lead blocker. Victor Ike in the middle. This time he's got it. Touchdown, Texas. Remember what Swanee said to open up the show. Stanford didn't want to get a long ways behind early, and here they are in that situation. Stockton's extra point up and good. <laughs> Troy Walters and Ryan Wells waiting on Stockton's kick. And again, the ball blows off the tee. By the way, that extra point by Chris Stockton has given him the school record for consecutive extra points. That was his 55th following that one-yard touchdown plunge, and it passes guys like uh, Jeff Ward and Phil Dawson, who were awfully good kickers here at Texas. He's got it re-teed, 14-0 Longhorns. Walters from the eight-yard line. One block cuts outside. He's got great speed. The kicker to beat. Nice return, and Stockton hangs with it, brings him down after a 38-yard kick return out to the 46-yard line. And we talked about the Dell game solutions with Stanford head coach Tyrone Willingham. Ty? First of all, offensively, uh, we've got to be able to contain their two big defensive tackles. Uh, those guys have been very explosive and really create most of the havoc that their defense starts. Defensively, the thing that we've got to do is uh, manage their blast play, which is a power play for us at the off-tackle and guard spot, also contain their zone play, and probably a really big one for us will be their screen game, which has been extremely ex explosive. Well, they sort of faked that screen swing pass and went for the home run ball the first time they had it, and now trying to get something going on the ground is Coy Wire, maybe got a yard, doubtful though. Aaron Humphrey with a tackle. Well, guys, you know, we talked to Tyrone, and we talked about the number of goals he had for this ball game. And he said that uh, one of the things he felt like was an advantage to Texas was the fact they had that one game under their belt mm -hmm. because in that one game, not only did they get some experience, but they learned their mistakes. And so they get a chance to correct them. In this ball game, he has to find out, well, what his weaknesses are and then how to correct them. He now knows that his young punter and that punt team is a weakness, but does he have the time to correct it in this ball game? That's critical. Yep, the fear of the unknown, and one of the fears became reality in that opening punt. I'll tell you another fear, something that he did not want to do is lose his center, Mike McLaughlin, number 73. He's out. Got a new center in the football game. McLaughlin's the steady when he started the most games, and it's the toughest matchup. It was his 35th straight start. He's the guy that calls all the signals up there up front. Wire hit immediately. Third down and ten. All the wideouts to the right of Husak under pressure. Fires. What a catch by Walters, but I don't think he got the first down. I don't think he did either. Looks to be about a foot or two shy. Ahmad Brooks. It was number five on number five out there, and they mark it. Ahmad Brooks. Maybe close enough to look at. I think it's it's a better opportunity right now to go for it than punt. Right. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Fourth down and about a foot. Husak might try to draw Texas offside and get a cheap one here. Straight ahead he goes. Quarterback sneaks good for the first down. First down, Stanford 
at the Longhorn 43. And Wire just can't find any room. Actually, second effort and a little help from one of his offensive linemen takes Humphrey down to the 40-yard line. Second down and seven for the Cardinal. Just under eight minutes to go, first quarter. And now Husek doesn't like the looks of something, and he's going to call a timeout. Texas by two touchdowns. Stanford coming up with a second down at about seven. They don't want to waste any opportunities here, Gary. No, and it's probably a passing situation. One of the beliefs for Texas against a good passer is to use two safeties, at least in a pre-snap look. The quarterback doesn't know exactly what he's going to get from that look before the ball snapped. Play action bootleg. And a throw dropped by Russell Stewart, the tight end. He had a little bit of room to breathe. Maybe could have gotten the first down. And a third down and seven. Here comes a blitz. Husack. Walters made another tough catch. Again stretches out. Last time he was about a foot short. Eighth play of the Stanford drive. Fourth down again about a foot. Last time it was Husack had a quarterback sneak. He's got Coy Wire behind him. Should run the ball right. Two tight end set. There is Wire to the right. He's got the first down. And Stanford will keep the drive alive at the 32-yard line. And soon they'll be erasing that record if that thing keeps coming up. That's for sure. We're going to talk about that a little bit as the game goes on. Here's a counter to Brian Allen. Brian and Allen, who started four games last year, penalty marker down at the end of the play. Bill Walker, number 17. Allen got about five. Let's see what the markers are about. It'll be a holding call against Stanford at the end of the play. I think it was one of the wide receivers. Well, three wide outs here. And an eye backfield behind Husek. Great drop. That one partially tipped, I think, at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Might have been Humphrey that it got was. a hand on it. The local listings for the game in your area. Or what you can get on pay-per-view or by direct TV. And here's a little slip screen, and there goes Delaney Pitts. Straight down the middle. Touchdown, Stanford. So Stanford strikes and gets right back in the football game. I'll tell you what. And he can throw it. They're going to be completing them. This time, Texas comes with a blitz over the slot. It's the same blitz they used to force Husak to throw the ball away the first time. This time, they have the screen going the other way. The blitz is coming from this side. He's throwing the screen the other side. That's a good call. See that? I like that kind of call. Then he's got the convoy. And he's got the guy. You're right. <laughs> Six guys could have scored this touchdown. <laughs> Mike Baselli going to try his first extra point of his career, and he got it up and good. It's good. So Stanford strikes from 37 yards out. There's the man that did it. Darani Pitts takes it the distance. 14-7, Texas. Baselli set to kick. Jones and Ike wait on it for Texas. Baselli booms another one, and Texas is going to have to start from the 20-yard line. Brad, we gave Greg Davis a touchdown call. Now watch this call. Here's Pitts down here running the screen, but the blitz is going to come from this side. They catch Texas. Perfect call against the defense. There's the blitz from one side. Now when we stop it right here, watch when the ball is caught. Look at these defenders. They're playing man-to-man. -man. They're looking. Back turn. They got their back turned. You get a little convoy right here, and you have, as you said, a convoy of perfect call against the right defense right there. Bill Diedrich with the call for Stanford, their offensive coordinator, and now Texas with a touchdown lead, working from the 20-yard line. Here's a toss sweep. Maybe about a yard for Hodges Mitchell. Got planted by Frank Primus, the cornerback. Those fountains look pretty good, especially by about the third quarter. I think the whole crowd would like to jump in one of those. Second down and eight from the 22-yard line. Inside is Ike. Down he goes after Austin Lee got draped all over him. And it's going to bring up a passing situation for Texas. Yeah, third down and eight from the shotgun. Four wideouts for Applewhite. Here comes a blitz. He stands in over the middle. He's got his man on the run. Kwame Kabir. Stiff arm across the 50. He's gone. Texas answers Stanford in a hurry. 21 to 7. Stockton's kick. Brian Wells takes it at the 11 yard line. Wells, little seam out to the 30. Nice return. Goss. 
No gain for Brian Allen. Second down and 10 for the Cardinal. Three wide out grouping for Houston. Throws on the run a little bit too low. Intended for Durrani Pitts. Brad, I just wanted to give you an update on Mike McLaughlin. He would want his wife, Emily, to know that he's okay. But the <laughs> trainer says he has a sprained right ankle. They taped him, I believe, two times here in the sideline. He was still limping quite a bit. There's no indication as to whether or not he will get back into this ball game. He is a bit of an Iron Man and takes pride in the fact that he started every game since he's a sophomore. So if it's up to him, he'll come back in the ball game. But I think the trainers will have something to say about it. Yeah, they're working on it. You can bet his little baby daughter, Marie, born in June won't be too much for him to handle even with a bad wheel. Third down at 10. Texas blitz coming. Husek locks it out. Durrani Pitts got a first down catch. He's dragged out of bounds at the 42 by Joe Walker, but as Gary said, as long as there's life, number seven's going to come up throwing. Yeah. Ryan Allen, the single setback. They have not been able to establish anything on the ground. They come up firing again. This one in and out of the hands of Dave Davis. A nice play over there on the corner. By Ahmad Brooks. I'll buy that. Play fake. Cusack throws, and this time it's caught at the 50 by Dave Davis, the guy that just dropped the last one. It's going to bring up third down at about two. Yeah, they're, they're Moore and Carter in a dual backfield. And Kerry Carter is the true freshman from Canada that we knew we'd see sometime in the first quarter. Cusack pump fakes. He's going to take it on his own. He's got the first down. Todd with a slide at the 44. And the Cardinal keeps it going. Pass offense pretty good. Jammer and Butcher both out for the season. Husak, great play fake, hit it and threw it long and overshot his man just by a bit. Tafiti Uso is the guy out there, incomplete. That offensive line for Stanford seems to be doing a better job protecting the quarterback. They only allowed seven first downs last week, did Texas. Best in 17 years. Husak throws too far in front of Troy Walters, and now it's going to be third down and 10 for Stanford. Three tech. Ninth play of the Stanford drive. This is about the spot on their last drive when they scored on that screen pass. Husak deep down the middle for Davis. Incomplete. Nice coverage back there by Joe Walker. Remember, the first punt was blocked. They'll get this one away, and it's a dandy. In fact, it's too nice. It's going to carry to the end zone. <laughs> and Texas, after a 44-yard kick, will get it back. Leading 21 to 7. Just fire away on this one. We want you to think about it. There's a lot of things to think about as you want to look at first down. You know, you got games late in the season. You don't want Ron Dane to get hurt. Right. You need to note, he has not averaged 156 on against Ohio offense. State and Michigan. No, he hasn't. So he may have to build up a little bit of a lead. Penalty marker on the play. That's going to back things up to the 10 yard line. First and 20 now for Texas. See, we're right. Right now, Stanford like to press the reset on this game. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> and Major Applewhite's working on all megabytes right yeah. now. From the 10. Play action. Oh, did he get level as he got rid of that one? Took a wicked lick. As finally, Stanford got some heat on him. Willie Howard and Marcus Hoover came flying in there. Well, Willie Howard is the best defensive lineman for Stanford's football team. Plays inside. That means he's got to run right through, guys. And that's what he does that time. Runs right through the block of Leonard Davis that time. The big offensive lineman for Texas and gets right in Major after White's face. And that's why that ball sailed so high. Major took some wicked hits against NC State last week. And he actually wore a knee brace on his left leg for part of the week in practice. And when I talked to him yesterday, I noticed the bruise yeah. on his right knee. So he got beat up pretty good. Here's a draw play to Hodges Mitchell. Nice move in the backfield. Hodges Mitchell across the 20 and out over the original line of scrimmage. Got it to the 22-yard line. Probably the best running play of the year right there for Texas. He sets his team up for a third and eight from the shotgun. Applewhite down the middle in stride again. And it's Kwame Cavill again out to the 45-yard line. That one was right on the money. First down, Texas. Deville having a big game, including the 78-yard touchdown. This one has worked it out across the 44-yard line. Kwame Cavill, two catches, 101 yards. Just inside the 45. Here's the swing pass. Too far in front of Victor Ike, the intended receiver. A 6-1 sophomore, two touchdown passes already. Here's a screen pass out. Cavill on the run straight up the middle. One man to beat, Kwame Cavill. Not quite to the two-yard line. 
Primus and Smith finally got to him, but he got 54 more yards. First and goal for Texas. Applewhite play fake. Going to keep it. And he got about a yard. Tim Smith was there. So was Sam Benner. And it'll be second down and goal for the Longhorns. First quarter in a football game, you're Texas, you lose a game, you don't want to make one game count two. That was the theme here all week. Let's not let last week affect this week. Now you come with 30 seconds to go in the first half. You got the ball in, what, the two-yard, one-yard line, and you can have 28 points on the board in the first quarter. That makes everybody breathe a little easier if you're Texas. Mel Thompson in motion, second and goal. It's Hodges Mitchell. Ooh, hey, he takes a shot. It was Real Johnson who made first contact, and then Andrew Curry helped him out. Whew, that was a pop, and it's going to be third and goal. So Stanford trying to come up with a goal line stand. That's going to do it for the first quarter, though. Texas leading 21-7. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. With Gary Danielson and Lynn Swan, Brad Nestler back with you. Royal Memorial Stadium in Austin. It's 21 to 7 starting the second quarter. And now the Longhorns coming up with a third down and goal from a yard away. And Stanford desperately trying to come up with a goal line stand. Ike the tailback behind Ricky Brown. He'll get the call. Touchdown, Texas. Victor Ike, who scored on a swing pass last week, has a one-yard touchdown to go with his other one-yard touchdown for the first quarter. Complete domination by Texas in this football game. And, you know, I don't know if it's uh, waking up early, the heat, not playing a game, or people just not being when you play your first game. You know, you're used to pulling off your own guys and not hitting, but the, the game speed of Stanford compared to the game speed of Texas is noticeably different. Knocked it in to try to extend his consecutive point after streak here at Texas. He does. Up and good. One play into the second quarter. The Longhorns add to their lead 28 to 7. We saw Kent Bear, the defensive coordinator, try to urge his troops on and make some adjustments against this Texas team that's put up 28 on the board already. And Stockton knocks it out of the end zone. So Stanford will work from the 20-yard line. Well, it's down. Victor Ike's added another one from a yard out. It's 28 to 7 Longhorns. And boy wire, maybe a yard. Texas just has not given up anything on the ground, nor did it last week, as Gary was talking about. That time Everick Rawls, the linebacker, made the stop. With four defensive tackles up front, they got four big guys. They don't have great speed at the defensive end spot. Stanford again tries the run, and the guy we're just talking about, Aaron Humphrey, fills the hole and makes the tackle. Wire and Glasby behind Husak. Two tight ends set here for Stanford. He's going to swing it out of the backfield, and penalty markers will whistle this one dead. Pretty sure they had a legal procedure again for Stanford moved just before the ball was snapped. All their penalties have come against their offense. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, and it remains third down. So now they're going with the cubby formation. Three guys, all three receivers right there. Let's see what Quayle and the cubby is the intended receiver. There's a floater out there, incomplete, intended for Davis. I think Cedric Woodard might have gotten a hand on it or a hit on Husack. At any rate, it brings up another punting situation. Here's another tough spot for Sean Tolpenrude. Had his first punt blocked. His second one was a 44-yarder. Again, he's inside his five, though. Flags down as he got the kick away, and they whistle this one dead in midair. It's a legal procedure again by Stanford, and that's a bluff that Texas used. They kind of made the the, uh, the offensive line flinch by faking the rush. On the offense, five-yard penalty. That's illegal in the NFL. You'll see it right here. A fake by the defensive player right here. You're going to see a little arm movement. A little flinch, and that's all they needed to call it, just a lean. Now you got to wonder, though, if they don't go with the full block because Tolpin is going to be in his own end zone now. And they already got to one early in the ball game. Let's see if they do try to block this one. And he's a three-step punter and very slow. High snap. Here they come. He got it away, but he got hammered. The ball was tipped, so no roughing the punter penalty. 
And now it blows dead down at, wait a minute. Oh, Texas could get, Stanford's going to get that ball. That's Texas a mental mistake. It. You're right, Absolutely. Stanford's got the football. A terrible mistake on the other end by Texas, allowing the ball to touch him, and Tank Williams got down there and covered it. Now the officials are going to have a conversation. Wait a minute. Maybe there's going to be an overruling here. I don't think so. That ball hit a Stanford player in the leg. Texas and player, you mean. First Stanford, Brad, then Texas came in, thought it was a free ball to try to get it, and then Stanford got the ball back. Well, Gary, as a former punt returner, I'll tell you this. If Stanford, when they went down, if they touch the ball, oh, when they touch the ball, the it's team. dead. Doesn't Texas matter what happens after that Texas point in time. Possession. And I believe that's what happened. The Stanford player reached down, did touch the ball. I still don't understand why the Texas player decided he was going to jump in. It was the old Leon Lett play. Well, yeah. Legally touched by the kicking team is the call. As Just, you guys are talking about it, we get another look finally. You see the ball hit a Stanford player right on the leg right there. Right there, right in the right rear in the end that hit Tank Williams. Now, the Texas player thinks it's a free ball, tries to jump on it, and the ball should have gone back to Texas in my mind. Well, it is. Stanford in my mind. Well, it's Texas with Victor Wright on a reverse. Got a great block from Applewhite to get the corner. Down. Three to go from the 30-yard line. Apple White changing things up at the line. 28 7 Longhorns. Here's a toss to Ike. Looking for a cutback lane. Got close to the first down. Picked up a couple. Andrew Curry, the first to meet him. Stanford last year, as we talked, so decimated last year, defense really couldn't stop anyone. They returned 10 starters. I mean, that's good news, I guess. Might be bad news. <laughs> the good news is 10 starters back. The bad news is they gave up 440, 44 yards a game. And they're all back. Yeah. That's Ken Fair, new defensive coordinator. He was very confident when we talked to him yesterday. He says, I got a good feeling about these guys. Well, he'd like to see a stop. Third down, less than a yard, Texas. This is almost a waste down. Here's a toss. Ike's got it. And then some. Out of the 25-yard line. So much talk all week about the fact that Notre Dame had a game in front of Michigan this year. Applewhite on first down. Throws complete. Got his tight end, Chris Smith. Applewhite mixing it up. I think that's his fifth different receiver he's hit today. First time he's got his tight end out there. Tim Smith made the tackle. Tim, Tim Smith, quite a football player, Gary. He sure is. All Pac-10 player, led the team last year in tackles, was a high school quarterback, now he's at strong safety. That was always my biggest fear in life. <laughs> <laughs> to grow up to be 6'4", 230, and have to hit somebody, right? <laughs> have to play strong safety. <laughs> hey, you're big enough to move you. Apple White's been sensational today. The ground game, not much there. Kwame Cavill, a huge afternoon. It's second down and seven. Still trying to establish something on the ground. And remember, this one yards on 13 carries for the ground game of Texas today, though. Third down, Applewhite throws complete. Hodges Mitchell whew, got the train wreck at the 15, and I think he got the first down. I don't know. I think he did. I think he fell across the line. Broken wrist and all. He hung in there and took a wicked second shot from the secondary. Stanford got exactly what they wanted. They blitzed from the outside. They for forced Major Applewhite to throw the ball softly on a hot. Now, where's the secondary? That's a play that needs to be cleaned up. Chris Johnson, their best defender, comes up, just not strong enough. And then Tank Williams puts the wood to him. He sure does, just not strong enough to keep him from getting close enough to that line for a first down. That much. Here they've got fourth and inches. Ricky Brown, a fullback, is behind Applewhite. Here's a quarterback sneak. He's got this one. Listen to the cheer. Yeah. <laughs> that is gross. First down, <laughs> Applewhite and the long hole. Quick drop. Ooh, heavy pressure down the middle, incomplete. And Applewhite took a lick and a flag down. Real Johnson's the guy that came storming around the corner and planted Applewhite at the 19-yard line. The penalty marker, however, is in the secondary. See if we had a hold down there on the intended okay. receiver. It's either a hold or a pass interference. Pass interference on the defense. Offense takes possession at the spot on the foul. First down. Applewhite got leveled. He's still trying to shake it off, kind of bent over down there as he looks to the sideline for the call. Here's the hit he took. This was not a blitz. 
That was a bust at the offensive line. Mike Williams, number 63, and expected uh, did not turn out and block the line, the defensive end, basically, on that play. So it gives Texas a first and goal with 9.25 to go in the half. Brown, the up man in the eye with Hodges, Mitchell, the tailback. Here's a toss to Mitchell. Hodges cuts inside, got to the one. Frank Primus, number 47, you see, hit him low. And it'll be second down a goal.
after we see Texas get ready to tee it up. Stocked in a busy kicker in that first half. Will kick away. And Ryan Wells. And Brian Allen await it. And it's Wells who will field it to about eight yards deep. You no, know you need to play Chris Sims at some point in time. We're going to do whatever we need to do to win this ball game, and we'll just figure that out in the second half. Okay, Carl. You knew that answer before you asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, the second down and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Cusack throws complete to Riley Pitts. Made the catch out across the 35-yard line, and that's going to be good for a first down. Cusack may be changing things up at the line of scrimmage from the 35. They'll keep it on the ground. Something they have been unable to do today is run the football, and they don't there either. Aaron Humphrey and Sean Rogers again combined. It's a one yard loss, and it'll bring up a second down and 11. Our Morgan Stanley Dean Witter first half statistics. Here's how it looked. And you heard Mac talking about Stanford having done a pretty good job throwing the football part of their 193 total yards. But Texas 371. Their third down conversions, five of eight. At one point, they had five possessions and five touchdowns. And finally, they were forced into a field goal situation. A bad snap led to another touchdown. So that's how it went for them in the first half of play. I think the only negative stat the whole first half for Texas is they continue to not be able to run the ball very effectively. Yusak has that one knocked up in the air. Lee Jackson made a nice play out in space on that ball. Perfectly timed jump by the safety. And the palms are going to get sweatier and sweatier as we go, if that's a word. 13.36 left. It's getting hotter. The heat is on Stanford. And they trail 48-10. Yusak. Here comes the heat. Thrown incomplete. Boy, did he take a man, shot? Man, oh man, oh man. Everick Rawls let him have it. One thing, Todd took one for the team because there was a first pass interference downfield, and it's given Stanford a first down out to the 44-yard line. Wire and Brock in the backfield. McCullum and Wells. The wideouts. Again, trying to get something going with the running game. And it's just not happening. Lee Jackson makes a tackle on that one. Well, Brad, when your team is down by 30 points going in at half, what does uh, Tyrone Willingham say to his team? And I asked him, and he said, what I'm going to tell the team at halftime is that we have to get our backs up. We have to step up and play and call on the seniors to lead the team, to start a very slow process of coming back on into this ball game one play at a time, and then just do it. And maybe looking ahead to try to create something for next week. You're right. Here's a tight end pass complete across to midfield Russell Stewart, and bulls his way. Does Russell Stewart down within about a yard of the first down marker? Right. Third down and one. Worried about the one yard right now. And again, remember they're playing with their second string center in there as McLaughlin went out early in the ball game. They cut back right behind center, and Wire's got a first down on the ground. And we haven't said that much today for the Stanford Cardinal inside the 45 to the 44 yard line. Coming up next Saturday on ABC, we've got a primetime college football matchup for you. We're going to be in Columbus, number nine, Ohio State. We'll take on the 15th ranked Bruins of UCLA. And in the ACC, it's Georgia Tech against one of the Heisman hopefuls, Peter Warwick, and number one, Florida State. Those are our games next week, 8 o'clock, 5 o'clock Pacific time. On ABC, Brian Allen takes it out of bounds, penalty marker down at the 40-yard line. It's going to be holding against Stanford again. Stanford's eighth penalty of the day sets him back to a first and 21. Here's a quick slant. Durrani Pitts makes a catch, broke one tackle, and still dragging guys with him down to the 37-yard line as he picks up 18 on the play and gives him an opportunity to keep this drive going. He's the guy that has Stanford's only touchdown today, a 37-yarder on a middle screen. Three-step drop, getting a lot of pressure, nothing in his face this time. Todd says, hey, this works. I could throw a spiral when I'm one of those guys trying to eat me. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and three. Allen and Moore, the backfield behind Husek. He's going to roll to his left and throw back to his right to his tight end. 
Texas waiting on him there. It's a matter of what Stewart can get. He can't get much. Aaron Babineau just hung with it. Brian Allen is the single setback, but it's Husak to throw, and that one, he got pressure from Babineau again, I believe, and might have gotten a hand on it. Fourth down and two. And Stanford, two for two on their fourth down conversion here, so far today. Here comes the blitz. Watch this. They play action and go deep down the middle. And he overshot a wide open Dave Davis. It would have been a touchdown. Oh, man, man. They had the play. They had Texas fooled. And Husak just didn't pull the string enough. Overshot his intended receiver. Texas is long on tradition, and Mac Brown is trying to add to that tradition. Whenever the players come onto the field before the game, they walk down the hall and see all the consensus All-American, academics are All-Americans. Then they touch the Longhorn to respect all the players who have played this game before them. Then they come out and they touch a picture of Freddie Steinmark, a player who played 69 and 70 and died of cancer. And Mac Brown says, if you can't get up and get emotionally ready for a ball game after that, then you're at the wrong school. And today, this football team is absolutely ready. Boy, Brad? no doubt about it. Major Applewhite still at the controls, as Gary said. He thought maybe see him one more series in this quarter before maybe we'd see a change at quarterback. Applewhite, three touchdown tosses in that first half. Quick drop, Major delivers. Nunez has got it very close to a first down out to the 45-yard line. Uh, is, is, is a nice story, but there are a lot of other great stories out there, and it's, it's what do you, we have a problem with, uh, with survivorship now. We have that he's a great person, and... Uh, this is going to be a successful program. Well, I know Mac said on uh, Friday night dinner that he believes that Lance Armstrong, his neighbor, is also a great inspiration to these kids on and off the field. Congratulations to you, and uh, I need some bike lessons. Can we, <laughs> <laughs> can we go ride together yeah, sometime? Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Well, second down. Ten to go from the 46-yard line. Apple White going to throw the quick slip screen to Kwame Cavill, and this time Stanford's waiting on it. Although Kwame got it into Cardinal territory at the 49-yard line. And it'll bring up a third down and about six. As we watch, present best number of receptions for any duo in Texas history. Kwame Cavill could be Garrity. Who's going to be Kwame? Yep. That's the question. Else. They need another guy to emerge in this attack. He did hit Montreal Flowers earlier in the game for a touchdown. And he goes down complete inside the 40 to Kwame Cavill. And a first down of the 33. I still think, you know, you look for teams, you look for problem areas in a game for Texas right here. Again, the rushing attack. They did not run for a lot of yardage in that first half. The other is, who's emerging as the next receiver besides Kwame Cavill? First down for the Longhorns at the 33-yard line. Kwame's got a career high going, 180 yards on the day. Applewhite going on top, looking for another receiver, and this was... Montrell Flowers, who we hooked up with earlier. Nebraska looking pretty good. Texas looking very good. 48 to 10. A second down at 10 at the 33 yard line of the Stanford Cardinal. Here's a draw play. Inside handoff. Ricky Brown doesn't carry it much, but he carries some would be tacklers with him inside the 30. That's it. To the 29. Give your blocking back a little sugar. <laughs> third down and five. Texas 70% of their third downs today. Here comes a blitz on Applewhite who steps out and throws a little blue pass to Hodges Mitchell on the run. And Hodges weaves his way to the 12. And that is to do it. Major's doing it all right up today. First down toss to Hodges Mitchell. Oh, man. man, he got a nice block out there by Ricky Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Smith was the guy that made the collision with Ricky yeah, Brown. That was a backup block by Ricky Brown right there. He took what he blocked him into his back. It was, like, it was effective. Watch Ricky Brown and watch Tim Smith, number 10, come into your picture. Watch this. Oh, man. Still work. It still work. <laughs> Tim Smith will hit you. He's going to be a good pro player. He was a leading tackler for this team a year ago. If he's the leading tackler this year, that's going to be bad news. Yeah, you don't want your safety right. making all those stops. 109 tackles last year. 11th play of the Texas drive. Second and five. They can get a first down inside the two. They won't need it. Touchdown on Hodges Mitchell. Stockton in for the point after. Trying to cap off a 64-yard drive in 11 plays, and he does. And there's some more ammo in the background, as you can hear. That's one tired cannon over there. Hodges Mitchell from three yards out. It's 55 to 10, Texas.
maybe some redshirt freshman Freshman, cows or something. Bring them in. Put the backups in. I'm ready to go back to the barn. Looking for a backup steer. I don't think they have one. Do steers go to the barn? (laughs) Bring them back to the corral. Corral, I think. Maybe Capital City, Austin, Texas. Bright, sunshiny day. It's going to be hotter probably by the time the fourth quarter rolls around than it was when we began. And Stanford offensively, Husak, those aren't really bad numbers, but uh, under 50%. I know he doesn't like that part. It's even worse than 55 to 10. Here's a draw play. Kerry Carter, this is their true freshman that they were hoping to get a look at, and he gets a decent gain out of about seven yards. As we go, maybe surprising in what is on the scoreboard, 55 to 10. That was Joe Walker who made the hit on Kerry Carter on that last carry, and Joe's coming off rather slowly, the junior out of Houston, Texas. Came up to make the tackle. I don't know if somebody fell on him at all, but it looked like he caught maybe a knee to his kidney or his uh, knee-to-knee type action on that play. Carter got six, and it's second down and four. Carter, the highly touted freshman out of Toronto. Husak's going to go deep, left side. Davis can't get there. And a penalty marker down. Call it interference. That was weak. Irvis Hill was in taking Carter, predictably a takeoff play against the defensive back. And this was, uh, I don't know if it was catchable or not, but that was a little bit weak. That ball just died in the air. First down with the penalty at the 41 yard line. Pump fake. He's going to go right back that way. And incomplete this time. Deronnie Pitts, the intended receiver that time. Hey, Brad, Gary, it's, it's, it's one of the things you always have to do when you get into a football game. If you've got a good passing attack and a smart quarterback, whenever they put in a young or cold defensive back, especially at the corner position, you got to go after them. Irvis Hill. Second down and 10, the 41. Usang, draw play this time. Carter, drop for no game. Nice job by the inside guys, including Wilkins, the linebacker, and Sean Rogers, the big defensive tackle. Interesting story about Kerry Carter, the true freshman tailback in for Stanford. He came out of Canada, where he attended 13th grade in Canada, had a teacher strike up in Canada that year, so he played in a couple of all-star games. And when you talk to Ty Willingham and Bill Dietrich and everybody in Stanford, they said this is a guy that is very mature and is a real deal. He narrowed it down to Wisconsin, Ohio State, and Stanford and chose Stanford. Why? Because they beat Michigan State when he watched that game a few years ago. How about that? Here's a pass thrown behind and almost caught by Ryan Wells. Tipped it, nearly tipped it to himself. Would have been a first down. Ahmad Brooks was there with him. Man of the game. I think a quarterback, which we're going to see. Tolpen through the punt. A long time to get it off. Wobbly kick. Garcia's calling fair catch and waves everybody off. And Stanford will down it at about the 19-yard line. 39-yard kick. No return. We'll return, though, right after this. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Lynn Swan with you from Austin, Texas, where the Longhorns lead 55 to 10, 424 left in the third quarter. And the Longhorns take over from their own 19-yard line, and we aren't going to see a change of quarterback yet. Major no. Applewhite's still out there. And I think I figured it out. See, there's a connection between all the refreshment and concession stands here, and they want to keep this crowd here as long as possible. Everybody's going to stay until Sims gets in the game. So, you know, you keep that until the fourth quarter, you sell maybe a 20,000 No gain on the play, and two things Gary was talking about earlier, the fact that Texas has not been able to establish a ground game today, and maybe the fact that that guy is uh, too Kwame Cavill oriented about the only two negatives you can find. Well, right uh, is he a pro? Through for 408 against Oklahoma State, including three touchdown passes in that game. Here he is under some pressure. Ricky Brown, did he catch that? Almost did. Incomplete. And it brings up third down and 10. Here we go. Third down and 10 for the Longhorns. 
Stockbauer thinking about a blitz, backs out of it. Applewhite all kinds of time. And now runs out of it. And runs out of the pocket, heads to the sideline. A flag now. We may have a holding call that might negate a first down scramble by Major Applewhite. Roger Raisler just dragged down Willie Howard that time as the scramble came out of the pocket. And that was a, a very clear call. And Major took a shot in the kidneys, I think, at the end of that play. And that's one, even if they want to do it less, they're still going to call that one. It's third down and 19. I may have said third and 11. Third and 19 back at the nine yard line. So this changes everything was a first down run negated by penalty and Applewhite's going to be near his own end zone to throw what looks like oh, put his knee down. He's down. Yep, Montreal Flowers put his knee down to make that grab. And so now Texas is going to be punting deep in their own territory. And we know what punts are all about with Texas at least from last week. You'll see it. They're going to th throw the wide receiver screen again. Snuffed out this time by Stanford. Can't do that. Nope. So Ryan Long got his first punt out. This is a tougher spot, though. He doesn't have as much room as he would like to have. You just saw him turn his head a little bit as if to say, where's that in line? He needs a clean snap. McWilliams to snap it and got it there to him. And he got it out of there. And again, the crowd almost facetiously will applaud. And on the other end, it's Garani Pitts who's going to bring it back into Texas territory. And good field position for Stanford in the 44-yard line. We'll see how today. Here, a lopsided Texas advantage. Stanford trying to fight their way back in it. Nice catch out there by Jamie and McCullum. Caught the back end of that ball and picked up about four yards. A lot of discussion here. Illegal use of hands on the defense, hands to the helmet. That's 10 yard penalty. No running between those tackles. Boy, you can't run the ball between the tackles. Then those speedy linebackers clean up your running game, and it, it gets very, very tough. First down at the 34 for the Cardinals. Here's a swing pass out. Wire tried to catch that about three times and couldn't, and Everett Rawls was there to make sure that he didn't find the handle. But there have been a number of those short passes that, well, Stanford just has failed to make. Yep, yeah. about nine drop balls today, as a matter of fact, Swanee. Here's a long ball and a pump fake. Davis, oh, he should. There's a tenth drop Ten. ball, and that would have been a touchdown. His arms got short at the end of that play, it looked like. That looked like it should have been a score. Perfect. That's an ugly ending to that one. Should have been six. Third and ten. Here's the slip screen inside and all over that is Casey, Casey Hampton. Casey said, I've seen enough of those things today. <laughs> Fourth and seven. Same formation. They almost threw over through for a touchdown. Husek got hit as he let go. Diving attempt, and that one should have been caught too and wasn't. Caleb Bowman leading 55 to 10 with 116 left in the third quarter and took too much time I think penalty markers down with just a little over a minute remaining call the snap legal procedure on the offense five yard penalty it remains first down and before the first and 15 now for the Longhorns and a miss yep and Applewhite got back on top of it. Major actually picked up a couple of yards. Uh, Texas offense has completely lost focus of this football game. So second down at 12. You know what they're ready to do? They're ready to put on the baseball caps. That's what they're ready <laughs> That's to do. That's right. <laughs> Take that hat off and cool off a little bit on the sideline. Cavill in motion toward the ball. Here comes a full blitz. Look out from behind. Smith lets Applewhite have it. And Cavill tipped that thing away with that. 40-inch vertical leap. He jumped up, knocked that away, or would have been an interception. Great play by Cavill. You can see his instincts of being a defensive player on that one. Cavill comes in motion. Same play he scored a touchdown on early in the game, but Smith again, remember, he's the leading tackler a year ago for Stanford, comes out, puts the pressure, and Applewhite's very fortunate to get an interception on in that play. There's what Tim Smith did last year. Ten tackles a game. Tied for the Pac-10 lead with six interceptions. And he'll take your head off if you give him a chance. And he almost took Majors off on that last play. Third down and 12. Little stunt on on the Stanford front. This pass incomplete in and out of the hands of Cavill. And it's Smith who makes the play on the intended pass receiver that time. So good possession, uh, good series rather for Tim Smith. Not a good series for the Texas offense. And Ryan Long's going to have to come in to punt. A little bit after last week. Everything's going all right this week so far. This one's Long's best attempt, great hang time. Davis waiting on a fair catch, takes a Texas bounce, goes inside the 10. It's 
going to end up being the best punt of the year, I think we can say. <laughs> Happy Ryan Long knows it. Nine-yard line. They take over again. Late here, 15 seconds remaining third quarter. Here's Brian Allen finally finding a little bit of running room. And he got about seven yards out to the 17. And that's going to bring the third quarter to a close. Back at Royal Memorial Stadium, Austin, Texas. The Longhorns 55, Stanford 10. With 15 minutes left, Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Lynn Swan and our ABC crew along with you. First week of the season for Stanford, and it shows it. And the second game of the year for Texas, and that shows as well. Allen trying to cut outside, run out of bounds by Ahmad Brooks after a gain of about a yard. Play fake, a good one by Husek. Now he's running for his life and lofts it long and almost intercepted that time by Ahmad Brooks, who hung right with Jamie and McCullum. It's incomplete. It'll be third and ten. Well, that, <laughs> he's guys. ignoring us. <laughs> <laughs> that pass incomplete. Well, I, I want you to don't discount what short guys can do. Here's a stronger, bigger quarterback in because Todd Husek hurt his right elbow on that last play. Orchard, boom. Doesn't matter how big you are. Down he goes, Corey Redding, the true freshman, the defensive player of the year in high school football last year, just makes his presence felt for the first time. 6'5", 245, true freshman, and makes a big play and forces a punt. Tolpen rule. Yes. Oh, boy, they got close again, but he got a nice kick away. Mile high, Garcia from the 37. Garcia, nice cut back, and got about 10 on the return to the 47. Russell Stewart made the stop, a 54-yard punt, 10-yard return. Ten. Well, there's always a moment in every college football player's career where he has to make his first appearance and is a highly touted superstar high school player. It comes right here for Chris Sims. Toss sweep. Hodges Mitchell got the corner and knocked out at about the 48-yard line. Real Johnson ran him out. Not ready to really play, but remember, they said... Peyton Manning wasn't ready to play. Exactly. You're always, as a backup quarterback, just one play away from having to play. That's why it's necessary to get him in a game. Hodges Mitchell, no gain on that play. Andrew Curry came over to make the stop for the gotta, first time. They got to let him throw. This looks like the spot. Hodges Mitchell is the motion man. And the big freshman left-hander, the quick drop, the quick slant, and it batted down. So that'll go in the record book, too. Matt Leonard knocks that pass down. Mac feel the urgency of trying to get him in the game, but we need to put him in the game where he can have success. Didn't have success on that series, necessarily, but only threw one pass. It was incomplete. He's on the headset. He got a pat on the shoulder pads from Major Applewhite when he got to the sideline as if to say, kid, hey, there'll be a completion coming up probably before this game's <laughs> over. 12.48 before this game's over. It's all Texas here in Austin. We're going to see our third quarterback of the day for the Cardinal of Stanford. It's Randy Fasani now yeah. in there. We got a, a prep national quarterback of the year, too. It was 1996. That's Randy right. Fasani, number one quarterback in the country. Third signal caller today for Stanford. They're still trying to get Paul Wires some yardage, and he's still going into the negative area. Well, the guy that... But whenever there's a coaching change, there's always concern how that new man is going to fit in. And Matt Brown seems to be a, have been accepted oh, greatly. He's good. very good. Mm -hmm. well, one of the indications that, that he's going to have some time is obviously that he had a good season last year. But... Playing golf, he's at practice quite a bit. Darrell Royal, three national championships here with the Texas Longhorns. And uh, as a guy that Matt Brown growing up I, fun to see that Mac has brought back the Texas traditions, and the locker room is full of it. It's amazing. Yeah. You walk in there, and you go, man, this is college football. You know, when you go to these type of institutions like Notre Dame, Michigan, Alabama, you know, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, you know, there's no use trying to ignore the tradition. You can't run away from it, so you might as well embrace it. Right. That's exactly what Mac Brown has done. Max Sims. at quarterback, the true freshman. The lefty comes up, wanting to throw, has it batted down again. So back-to-back -back passes knocked out of the air. Third down and 15. Four wideouts, 
Sims from the shotgun. Plenty of time. Zips it across the middle. There's his first completion. It's a first down. Brandon Healy out of bounds. And Dad says that's the way I talk to you. Yeah. On Phil Sims' face. It'll be a smile that Gary Danielson will wear someday when Matt Danielson throws his first completion for Northwestern. But that's fun to see. Next generation making me feel kind of old, actually. <laughs> first down at the 13-yard line. Nice play fake by Sims. Got some pressure. Throws on the run into the end zone. Just tipped away or it would have been a touchdown. Chris Johnson did make a nice play on that one. A bootleg pass. Sims going to his left. Dorian Cast, number 71, who's had a pretty good football game here for Stanford in the face of Sims. Let's it go on the run, and this was very close to being his first touchdown. Oh, boy. So close. And it brings up second down at 10. Jones and Healy in there at the wide receiver spot. So Chris is not playing with the front line receivers right now. The big lead for the long run. Gives it off on the ground. Hodges Mitchell. And Hodges has it right about at the 10 yard stripe. Andrew Curry. Chris, stop. Brandon, Chris Sims was uh, everybody's number one quarterback in the country this year, but maybe the number two quarterback in the country is on the other sideline. That's Chris right. Lewis for Stanford, number 15. They love this guy, six foot four guy, National Gatorade Player of the Year out west. And Chris Lewis is a guy that they think is going to be a superstar here at Stanford coming out. Couple of Chris's. He's a great looking football player. Watched him throw yesterday, and he has all the tools to be a great one. He's going to redshirt this year. One from each coast. Third down. A long six. Sims fires complete at the four. Battling for the end zone is Healy. I think he got the first down. He did. Had to get inside the three. Took a couple of wicked shots, but the junior out of Carlsbad, California, has got a first down for the Longhorns. First and goal. And Hodges Mitchell's the tailback. He's got one touchdown run today as Ike had three short ones. There's the bootleg. Looking for the pass to the end zone. Touchdown! First and goal. Play action pass. Just like he promised him when he recruited him. Think about how he landed Chris Sims. Remember, he originally committed to Tennessee, and then Max said he gave me a call, and we don't really know what happened, but he called and said, you got anything left? And we said, we sure do. And he signed it, but I, I think I know. He just liked orange. He liked burnt orange a little bit better than gives Texas a 62 to 10 advantage. New kicker, Jeff Baker, on the kickoff. Brian Allen fumbles it at the 5, picks it back up at the 10. And works his way out across the 20. So Stanford on its way to an 0 and 1 start. Texas 920 remaining in the ball game. Texas 62 to 10 on top of the Cardinal of Stanford. The Sally in a quarterback. Here's a toss to Gary Carter. Their freshman gets it out close to a first down across the 30 yard line. Long faces on that Stanford sideline, having not played a game coming in, coming into the Texas Heat, an early morning start. You add it all up, maybe not ready to play at full game speed, and they found out about that speed today. <laughs> and, and I'd say maybe they're just not as good as these guys. That's either. pretty much a possibility, too. <laughs> Second down, less than a yard. You can play these guys at night in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Carter, and he breaks into the clear and out to the 45-yard line. He's showing he flashes of what they hope for. A big fella, about 225 pounds on a 6-2 frame. Defensively, Irvis Hill over there on the corner. Irvis Hill. Sonny, the third Stanford quarterback to play today. Husak got him a touchdown on a screen pass to Durrani Pitts that uh, made it look like this was going to be a ball game, 14 to 7, and uh, all Texas from that point on. 
it is interesting to watch some of these great high school kids come into programs, you know, a can't-miss guy can't get on the field for Stanford right mm -hmm. here. You know, Randy Pisani is a guy that everyone that was unanimous, he was a great player, the next John Elway, and this guy can't even get on the field. There's four of them like that, basically, at Stanford. Right. Right. Yeah. Carter into Texas territory at about the 48-yard line. I mean, the other guy's got a game. I still like my chances. Third down and three. Here comes a blitz. Fasani somehow got around one of the defensive linemen for the Longhorns, and he gets a first down run. I wonder if he just kept that thing on his own. It almost looked like it. Yeah, he saw that blitz coming right where he was going to run the ball, and it would have been a smart play to do that. Last year, Stanford played all three quarterbacks in a lot of different situations, and Fasani's uh, the guy that played in goal line situations because of a little bit of option that he could add to him. Borchard, who we also saw today, and there's those two guys, Husak the starter, Borchard 11, the backup. Borchard can throw it through a wall pretty much with his arm, the great baseball player. And then it was Masani, the little change up in that he can run pretty well. And he showed it on that one to get a first down down to the 33-yard line. Now back to Carter. And Carter leaving his way. Now again, he's not playing against some of the top people of Texas, but he is showing flashes of what they had hoped for. The big back, maybe, of the future. And I think it just shows you again the value of those first four defensive linemen for, for Texas. I mean, those guys don't let you get any space to show that type of flash up there. But Kerry Carter, the coaches told us, kind of remind him of Corey Dillon. Mm -hmm. If there's anything close to that guy, that guy was hammering nails every time he ran the ball. And that's Absolutely. A, that is a great potential running back for Stanford. Former Washington star, now in the NFL. And that would be something big to live up to. He still in, stays in there at the tailback spot. They fake it to him. Asani punts once, throws, just overshot his intended receiver. And it was Ryan Wells out there laying out at the goal line trying to haul that thing in. I think Ty Williams has been pretty smart with his football team in this game. I mean, obviously, this game was over a long time ago, and he took some of his key players out of the football game. You know, it's... It, it, it's the same theory that Max said. Let's not lose two games because of one game. And I think Ty says, let's get our guys out of the game, at least our playmakers out of the game, and not get them hurt. Eighth play of the Stanford drive. Third down and two. Carter's got it, and a bunch more. Might have his first touchdown of his college career. He does. Touchdown, Stanford. Well, he's got some quicks. Harry Carter, big guy, 6'2", 225. We talked about his statistics in Canada. The fact he didn't play much last year in 13th grade, if you will, but they had high hopes for him, and he just busts one off here for the touchdown. We were kidding uh, yesterday. I saw him out at practice. I said, if you run off after second down, I'm going to dog <laughs> Now, I don't know if people down here realize, but in Canadian football, you only have three downs for a first down, and usually only use two when you punt on third down. 24-yard touchdown run. Really legal substitution again. 12 men breaking the huddle, and Stanford's going to have to move back. They got, one, they got that one down. They do have that one down. <laughs> so we've seen a couple of freshmen make big plays today. In fact, a couple for Texas. Corey Redding made a nice play on a sack. Chris Sims threw his first touchdown pass, and now on the Stanford side... Kerry Carter, a 24-yard touchdown run, capping a 79-yard drive. A little less than three minutes they used in eight plays to get the score. And the extra point up and good. 62 to 17 is our score. With team, and they can't afford to lose Ron Dane. So I like the strategy. Give him his 150 and look for the better of the team. I don't see how you can coach and coach for records when you're trying to preach to these kids that it's all about winning. Well, Wisconsin won that game, by the way, today. We have the final now. It was 49 to 10 from the 20-yard line. We had close to 50,000 hits on this question. Boy, not bad. And I was only getting a dollar a question. Yeah, you were. Yeah, so you, not doing very you don't well. mind staying here a little while now, do you? <laughs> Out to the 29-yard line. Well, well guys, I... I I'm, I'm here. <laughs> All right. Well, I think Barry kind of pulled him out today. Wisconsin's first three games are pretty easy. That's what Swanee was alluding to. A lot of people thought that uh, they've had the opportunity to let their starting quarterback have a huge day, a 300-yard-plus afternoon for Major Applewhite and three touchdowns. And now their freshman, Chris Sims, in at the controls. Here's a guy he threw his touchdown pass to. Chris Robertson breaks into the free. Chris Robertson might have his second touchdown of the day. Inside the 30. They're not going to get it. Touchdown, Texas. 
68 yards. First he got a touchdown toss from Sims, and now he just rips off the long run, breaking several tackles along the way. Jeff Baker in to attempt the point after. When you can use your backup kickers for extra points and kickoffs, you know it's a good day. Right down Main Street for Baker. Robertson second score of the day. It is 69-17. And then not have people take notice. Brad, it's 1999. Texas is one of the most renowned programs in college football. When's the last time they ended up in the top ten? Yeah, that's right. 1983. That goes back a ways, doesn't it? Here's Wells weaving his way around. Ryan Wells got a couple nice blocks, got across the 40 out to the, about the 42-yard line. Right. They got the super X's down there. Is, we've lost two ducks and three doves today. That's the bad news here over Royal Memorial Stadium. <laughs> Panthers used them all today. And Corey Wire's got to be saying, you know what? I'm ready to go back to Palo Alto. There, Curry made the stop. He is, but... From then, it has just been a colossal disaster, and another one for the Pac-10. I, I don't want to rub it in, but it, you know, it's 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 a conference that was under the microscope beginning of this year, and mm. twice we've done them, and they just don't have, to have any defense. Yep. Kind of a contradiction of terms, I guess. Yeah, getting ambushed right. in Ambi Va Happy Valley, but and this is the second week in a row now. As Gary said, we've seen a Pac-10 team just get shellac. And, and, and coming on the heels of last year, when you know the, what happened to them in the bowl season. Arizona's the only one that won a bowl That's game, right. beating Nebraska in the Holiday Bowl. Everybody else lost. So. He's a freshman quarterback, and you know you, you got to get him ready. I don't care. We don't care about what. He's got to get ready because he can't be like to get on any play. Right. Pretty fancy pitch by Chris that time. Yeah, he yeah. got tangled up and just kind of threw that one over his shoulder and got it to Kenny Hyder. Now on their roster, Texas has 83 kids from the state of Texas on their roster, so they don't uh, they don't have to go too far. They have to travel quite a few miles because it's such a big state, but they don't have to go out of state necessarily. <laughs> Teammate as well, the linebacker for Stanford, so he's seen some of his old buddies. Now, Applewhite originally committed to Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. High pass, broken up, intended for Jeremy Jones. Tech. And we'll see the Buckeyes of Ohio State against the Bruins of UCLA. High kick. Fair catch called for and taken by Davis. And Stanford will take over offensively at the 37-yard line with just a little over two minutes left in the ballgame. First down, 42-yard line for Stanford. Carter in there and gets the toss. Gets to the corner, puts the shoulder down, and run out of bounds by Irvis Hill after a pickup of a yard or two. You know, Carter doesn't look like he's even running that fast, but he keeps getting around the corner. So he's getting there quickly for a guy his size. Yep, 6'2", 225, 230. He was ready to enroll because he was done with school in January. Stanford does not allow that. He could not go through spring training, with uh, spring practice with them. So he waited, and a lot of schools were offering him the opportunity to roll in January mm -hmm. and go through spring practice. Pump fake. And now Borchard hooks up with Ryan Wells. And Wells into the secondary. Longhorns will drag him down at the 10-yard line. Roderick Bay.